Haya alofala, Haya alofala, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. In Alhamdulillah, in Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu wa Nasta'inu wa Nasta'firu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أمالنا من يدعي الله فلا مضل له ومن يدعي فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله كاتكاتي ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلقها منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تسألون به وأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا كلا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزٍ عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَسْتَقُوا هَدِيَةَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَقَالَ هَجِّ هَجِّ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَالشَّرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُتَطَاعُتُهَا وَكُلُّ مُتَطَاعٍ بِذَا وَكُلُّ بِذَةٍ دَلَالَةٌ وَكُلُّ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ All praise and gratitude is due to Allah. We seek His help and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils that our own hands bring about. Whomsoever Allah has guided to this religion of Islam, surely none can misguide. And whomsoever he has left astray, surely none can guide. I openly bear witness to the fact that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except for Allah. He has no partners in the matter of his creation, nor of his sovereignty over his creation, nor of his dominion over his creation. And I openly bear witness to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant slave and final messenger to humanity. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslim. O oh, mankind, reverence your guardian Lord who created you from a single soul, Adam. And from Adam, he created his mate, Hawa. And from the both of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about the creation of many men and women and spread them throughout the world. So, oh, you believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and reverence the wombs that bore you. For surely Allah is ever a watcher over you. Oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and always say a word directed to the right. Be truthful in your speech so that Allah will make your conduct hold and sound and that he will forgive you for your sins. And whosoever has obeyed Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success or victory. As to that which follows, verily the best of speech is the book of Allah, the Quran, and the very best of guides is the guides to whom the Quran was sent to, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes. who has informed us to be weary of newly invented matters concerning our religion, our way of life. For he has said that every newly invented matter is an innovation, and every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance is a going astray. And in another narration, he said, and every going astray will lead to the fire. And Abi Ruqayya Tamim ibn Aus Adari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and in Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa ahlihi wa sallama, qala, الدين النسيحة قلنا لمن قال لله ولي كتابه ولي رسوله والأئمة المسلمين والأماتهم on the authority of Abu Ruqayya Tamim Ibn Aus Adari may Allah be pleased of him that the Prophet said, the religion is sincerity, and we said to whom? He said to Allah, 
his book, his messenger, the leaders of the Muslims and their common folk. كُنْتُمْ كَارَعُمَةِ الْأُقْرِجَاتِ لِنَاسِ تَأْمَرُونَ بِالْمَرُوفِ وَتَفْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِلَهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an towards its meaning, You are the best of people evolved for mankind in joining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah. All you who believe, know with the certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined right conduct upon each and every one of us. And this not only pertains to our individual affairs, yet collectively as a community, as a ummah. So it is our obligation as Muslims to maintain a balance in our lives that not only brings out the best within ourselves, it also brings out the best in others. And this is one reason why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has directed us to be sincere in all of our dealings. And our dealings begin with Allah and with his book, the Quran, and with, his, and with his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and our leadership, our respective imams and our scholars, and also the common folk with which we share a common bond. The word nasiha is sometimes replaced or translated as advice or admonition. And it's confirmed by the prophets whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to warn the people of their times of the dangers that they may arise if they were disobedient and refused good counsel. The Prophet Nur salam, said to his people, Ubalikukum Risalati Rabbi wa ansahu lakum wa ahlamu minullahi ma la ta'lamun. I but convey to you the message of my Lord. Sincere is my advice, and I know from Allah something that you know not. As well as with the Prophet Sali, alayhi salam, whose peoples turn their backs on good counsel and constant reminders from him until the wrath of Allah deceased, descended upon them. قال يا قومي لقد أبلغ أبلغتكم رسالة ونسأت لكم لا تهبون ناسهم. He said, "O oh my people, I did convey to you the message for which I was sent with my Lord. I gave you good counsel." Yet he loved not good counselors. So advice and admonition is the tool of the believer. And this is used when it is asked for or asked about or needed. And one of the rights of the believer is when someone seeks your advice that you should respond with good advice and being sincere in the process, and that we should be persistent in standing firmly upon that which is right, even though it is against ourselves, or our parents, or our relatives, those who are the rich amongst us, or the poor amongst us. We should be fair and just in our dealings, no matter what the situation may be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, Ya ayu al-ladhina aminu kunu kawwa minu bilqisti shuhada'a dilaqi wallahu ala anfusakum awil walidaini wal akrabin in yakun qaniyan aw fakira falahu awla bihima 
فلا تتابعوا الحوى ان تديلوا وان تلو تلبوا او تعرضوا فان الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا towards the meaning O ye who believe stand out firmly to justice as witnesses to Allah even as against yourselves or your parents or your kin and whether it be against the rich or the poor for Allah can best provide for both follow not the lust of your hearts lest ye swerve and if ye distort justice or decline to do justice, verily Allah is well acquainted with all that ye do. So we, we are directed to maintain this level of sincerity, no matter the circumstance or to whom it may affect. For if we love and care for someone, we wish goodness for them and seek to direct them to that which continues to be a benefit. And if we are fearful that someone is going in the wrong direction and is being harmful to themselves or harming others by their actions, we are obligated to speak out against that type of oppression. We have an obligation to speak out about that type of oppression on the authority of Abu, of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu who reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah almighty said all my servants I have forbidden injustice for myself and I have forbidden it amongst you. So do not, do not oppress one another. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the people, he said, help your brother whether he is the oppressor or being oppressed. And the people said, Ya Messenger of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, we know how to help our brother if he is being oppressed. But how do we help him if he is the oppressor? And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at them and said, help him. Give him nasiha. Meaning give him good advice or admonition. On the authority of Mulaf bin Jamal, Rani Lahu Enhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Beware of the supplication of the oppressed, even if he is an unbeliever. Beware of the supplication of the oppressed, the one who is being oppressed, even if he is an unbeliever. For there is no barrier or screen between him, it and Allah. So be mindful that the religion is sincere advice. And that it's always the recourse of the, of the believer. Meaning that giving advice is the first step in understanding the relationship with Allah and his servant. Ibn al-Qatir, Rahim Allah Ta'ala said that giving sincere advice is an indicator of the advisor's wish to bring about goodness for the one who is being advised. So when we give good advice, we're looking to benefit the individual. We're helping or asking Allah to raise that person up to rectify their affair. And this is an indicator that, alhamdulillah, we are on the right path. 
So we should earnestly strive to adapt this, this attitude that the companions of previous generations apply and those before them. For the message of Allah has reminded us, Karufum Korni Tuma Ladina Yalunahum, Tuma Ladina Yalunahum. He said the best of the generations were his, his primarily. Those companions who, who, who sat with the prophet, who ate with the prophet, who listened to the prophet, who cried with the prophet, who, who, who slept with the prophet. All of these individuals were of the best generation. And then he said, Tuma ladina la Then those who came after them, the Tabi'in. And then Thuma Ladina Yalunahum, those who came after them. So these three generations were the best of mankind. And this is how they approached giving Nasiha. They were sincere in giving their all in all to their brother, to their sister, to the Ummah. And this was their methodology. Umar ibn al-Qutab radiallahu anhu, he once said, may Allah have mercy upon a person who gifted me of my faults. Once again, Umar ibn al-Qutab, Amir al-Mukminin, the one who is buried by Abu Bakr, who is buried by the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah be pleased with them all. He said, may Allah have mercy upon a person who gifted me my faults. Implying that leadership is not beyond reproach. That even those who are in positions of authority must lend an ear to the common folk. Their position is not that lofty that they cannot be, be, be talked to or counseled. And they should always lend their ear. And especially when they need to hear something. Allah tells us in the Quran that we may hate a thing which is good for us. At Dina Nasiha, the religion is sincerity. It's advice that is clear. We may hate to hear it sometimes. As Sali told the people, that you hate good counselors, that you hate to hear something that might affect your heart. As with Umar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, who felt gifted that someone told him about his shortcomings, his character defects. And he was, he, was, he, he was in a position to ask Allah to forgive him. So this is our position. This is where we should be with Nasiha. When someone gives you sound advice, then we should lend an ear to it. We shouldn't be objectionable. We shouldn't fight against it. We shouldn't use the Quran to battle one another because of nasiha, because of sincere advice. But we should humble ourselves and turn to Allah and ask for his forgiveness. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ladhi. Hadana the Islam. Women are Lena Bihi wa Akra Jana Fikari Umatin. Fanesalu Taufik, the may you hibu wa yorda, wa hisamima yakra u wa yakshat. Praise be to Allah who has guided us to Islam and put us in the very best of nations. We ask Allah to guide us to that which He is pleased with and that He loves. And we seek refuge in Allah from the things that he hates and is displeased with. And Nasiha, 
It touches upon the five categories mentioned by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith with which was mentioned in the first part of the khutbah. Nasiha lillahi. When it was asked of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Kulna, Kulna, we asked, we said, the man, to who does this, this, this nasiha belong to? And the Messenger of Allah said, Lillahi, who Lillahi belongs to Allah first and foremost. And then he said, Nasi li kitabihi, then sincerity to the book, li rasulihi, sincerity to the messenger. And then it was asked, Nasihatul A'imatil Muslimina, sincerity to the leadership, those who are in authority. Allah tells us in the Quran, all you who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger and those who are placed in authority amongst you. So it is clear that there is a chain of command. And then he says, sincerity. Sincerity to those who come after those who are, are the leaders, which means those who follow behind the leadership. So each one has their own domain. Yet each one interlocks with the next. to explain in detail the first point, which is the greatest of all these points, is the, is the sincerity belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is by being sincere in all of our actions and continually remembering Allah in all our affairs and circumstances. And by keeping our tongues moist with this remembrance, and always acting in accordance with that which we have been guided to and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. The kitabihi, sincerity to the book, to the Quran, means that we believe wholeheartedly in that which was revealed and that we apply the, the legislation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran into our daily living activities and our experiences as did the Salaf al-Sali so that we may become successful in our affairs as they became successful in theirs. And nasiha lil rasulihi and sincerity to his messenger means that we believe in him, in Rasulullah, in the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we submit to whatever is authentically reported to us from reliable sources, even though our understanding of it is limited with regards to some of the realities behind this perfect sunnah or, or the interpretation of his true import. Meaning that we may not understand everything that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given to us. Yet if it's authentic, if it's been verified, then we take it without the blinking of an eye. Because the Messenger of Allah asked the people, have I conveyed the message? They said, yes. Have you, have I conveyed it in its entirety? Yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not leave out anything that was of beneficial nature to, to humanity. Nor did he take us, nor did he direct us to anything that was harmful 
He said, Tagrabu, stay away from it. Run from it. Anything that will take you away from the victim, from the remembrance of Allah, leave it alone. Trash it. So understanding what was revealed to the Prophet through his Sunnah was a source of wahi. That the hadith that are authentic, those that are, 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 are clear, those whose, whose chain of command is meticulous, <coughs> we know that it's a source of wahi, of revelation. For we already know that the Quran is from wahi, revelation. And Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْتِكُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى Nor does he speak or say of his own desires. In huwa ila wahyan you have. It is no less than the inspiration sent down to him. So these are two types of revelations. Wahi. For as we, we look with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the messenger of Allah that he has done what? He has not enjoyed injustice upon himself. Nor has he enjoyed injustice upon any one of us. This is wahi. This is, this is, this is uh, hadith al-Qudsi. So this is a direction, a direct connect between the messenger of Allah and his Lord. So we have to be mindful. Have to be mindful. And nasihatul a'immatil muslimina. Meaning that the leadership, that there's a certain sincerity when we are with the leadership, with the scholars, with the imams, they say, some people say, take the kite, not your, your, your ears, put it in your mouth. Be quiet, listen attentively, as the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has directed us when we come to Jumu'ah. We should sit quietly and listen, because there's benefit in listening. Anything after after what you hear, then you can talk and ask questions about. But we should be mindful of the leadership because they are the ones who Allah has appointed to do what? To help us stay upon the path. Be of Nilam. And then their sincerity to the common folk, you and myself. that we have to be sincere when we give nasiha. We can't just be running up on a person and, and trying to hit him in the head because we think we have it correct. There is an etiquette that goes along with nasiha. And one point is that we should not, we should not criticize the people in front of other people. If we notice a thing we should quietly try to take them to the side and explain this to them. And inshallah, this will make it make the, the, the transition from being in a bad position to a good position. Because a lot of times when we challenge people in front of others, then it become it, 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 it becomes a roughage. It's hard, it's hard to get the point across because the defenses go up. And we should not allow ourselves to fall into in, in, in that pit of fire. Because the best way, the best way to approach someone is to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can I speak to you? Because this dua is specifically for the Muslims showing that there's peace, that we're not here to fight. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that, to that which he loves and is pleased with and we seek refuge in him from the things that he hates and is, and is displeased with. 
So kind of tell us what be hunt play the highlands to stop through what two three point eight and five minutes. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah.